Hi everyone, welcome to Working Out with Rufaro. In this video, we're going to go through everything that you need to know when buying wholesale clothing from Turkey in 2023. I'm going to be sharing with you my 12 things that you need to know before buying wholesale items from Turkish vendors. I have done other videos on how to shop from Turkey and if you'd like to watch them, you can just click this link right here. In this video, I'll also show you how you can download your free updated list of wholesale vendors from 2023. Before we get started, please comment, like, subscribe, and do all the other good stuff to help this channel grow. Without further ado, let's get into our video. The first thing that you need to know is that Turkey is home to some of the best luxury brands such as Louis Vuitton, Prada, Versace, Chanel, Gucci, and Balenciaga. You can find both original and fake branded clothing, shoes, handbags, perfumes, and many other fashion accessories. The Turkish economy is heavily dependent on the fashion industry, and the country is fast becoming a solid alternative to China for small foreign business owners who want to source wholesale clothing for reselling in their home countries. Turkish clothing may be more expensive than China, but the quality of the product is what keeps drawing business owners to the country. Turkey is said to be the third largest exporter of counterfeit products to the EU after China and Hong Kong. It's becoming cheaper to buy fake designer products from Turkey simply because the value of the local currency has been weakening for some time now. You can buy anything from fake designer shoes, clothing and handbags to perfumes and jewelry. There are many markets such as the Grand Bazaar and Spice Bazaar where you can find fake designer products and I've listed down some of them in the vendor list which I'm going to share with you. The interesting thing about some of these markets is that you might actually bump into a few original pieces that would have been seized by customs or auctioned when people failed to pay. You can also be able to buy these things at a very low cost and then resell them for three times the amount. When you visit any wholesale Turkish website or store, you'll find that clothing items are sold in what are called series. And these differ depending on the design, type of product you want to buy. A series is a Turkish wholesale approach to bulk buying. This is typically what a series will look like. Wholesale dresses can be sold in what are called 3 series or 5 series, which will be one color and one design but different sizes. So for example, if it's a 5 series, you'll have 5 with different designs, one color, one design, and it could be a small, medium, large, XL, and XLL. And if it's a 3 series, you'll get 3 sizes, one color, one design, and it'll be a small, medium, and large. It is difficult to buy one color one design in one size only single purchases as vendors and suppliers focus on bulk purchases. If you cannot afford to buy in bulk, then you can consider group buying and purchase as a group of people. Once you purchase your products, you can then share the items. Due to the fact that Turkish clothes are more expensive, most prefer to buy a series as a group to minimize cost. Group buying, however, requires trust, so you need to choose your partners wisely. Turkey has been experiencing tough economic times in the past decade. This has affected the value of their local currency, which is called the Turkish Lira. In 2022, inflation is estimated to have risen to as high as 85%, forcing store owners to mostly sell their products in US dollars. This is the reason why some Turkey-based shoppers, home country-based runners, and vendors price their products in US dollars. As long as your currency is as strong as the United States dollar, shopping from Turkey will be cheaper for you. As far as payments are concerned, you'll really have no choice but to work with the payment method that your supplier would have given you. If you visit local markets and stores, you'll find that very few accept electronic payments. Most prefer cash transactions, so you'll have to go to a local ATM to withdraw money. Even if you are sending your personal shopper or runner to purchase the goods on your behalf, you will find that they too will at times be forced to withdraw cash some taxis and bazaars accept both credit cards and debit cards, but it's better to always have cash as opposed to trying to look for it when you need it. Cash transactions will also grant you small discounts, which in my opinion is always appreciated. You can also find some exchange rate services within some of the market areas, such as the Grand Bazaar in Istanbul. In Turkey, you're expected to bargain before you enter a taxi or buy something at the market. When shopping for clothing items, the price can literally be cut in half if you say you're not interested and they're walking away. If you travel there and try to buy in United States dollars, the chances of them trying to take advantage of you because their foreign currency is very high. They can spot tourists from a mile away, so you need to do your best to always negotiate so that you get the best price no matter what currency you're paying in. 
When you're buying from outside of Turkey, it is extremely difficult to buy straight from a supplier or store owner because there are many middlemen and gatekeepers. In most cases, you are forced to use agents, helpers, buyers, personal shoppers, and runners who have already built connections with local suppliers and understand the market better and also know how to manage all the different payment issues you might face. These middlemen also have their own fees, which increases the overall cost of buying products from Turkey. And those who have access to the list of shops and contact details are reluctant to share because of the time and effort it took them to build these connections. They obviously also need to make money, and that's why vendor lists don't come cheap. If you can travel to Turkey just once, do so, because you will then be able to build your own network of suppliers who you can communicate with directly and build relationships in the process. Once you travel to Turkey, it becomes much easier for you to place your orders and not use runners or any other type of middleman. Most of the stores that have good wholesale prices or bargains do not have an online presence. And the very few that do have an online presence tend to be more expensive than those in the local markets. Most store owners prefer to use Telegram, Facebook, and WhatsApp to promote their product and place orders. Many middlemen such as your runners and personal shoppers also prefer to use either Telegram or WhatsApp to communicate with customers. There are many Telegram channels which you can follow and get the latest updates on all the different types of products. Some are now posting their videos on TikTok and very few have YouTube channels. But this is always appreciated if, it, if you can actually be able to see the video of a product as opposed to just an image. The most popular markets are in Osman Bay, Laleli, Fei, and Meta. The Grand Bazaar in Istanbul is well known for being one of the best places to shop for products that you can resell. When looking for shops to buy from, try looking for shops that are close to each other in a long street as this will save you time and allow you to easily compare prices. Don't forget that bargaining is very much acceptable so you can always negotiate prices and get the best deals for your business. I've included a list of popular markets and areas that you can consider targeting for your business. Whether you're visiting Turkey or interacting with suppliers online, it is helpful to know basic Turkish words and phrases so that you can have the best experience. You'll find that in many tourist areas, there are lots of people who speak English, but you'll be surprised as how many people actually do not speak any English. It is estimated that only 17% of Turkish people can speak English as a foreign language, so you must prepare yourself for some miscommunication. What I do like about interacting with some of these Turkish suppliers is that some of them actually have dedicated support professionals who speak English, so you may not need to worry about any language barriers if your supplier has all the resources that they need to be able to provide good customer support. So a quick rundown of some of the things that you need to know if you're thinking of traveling to Turkey are Book your flights at least three months in advance and always book your local flights before arriving in the country as they fill up quickly. Be careful of the guys who offer you tea when window shopping because they tend to demand that you buy something from them before you leave their shop. Also consider using storage lockers at the airports to store your things. You can also use websites such as Expedia.com and Skyscanner.net to search or book for flights and places to stay. If you enjoy convenience, then you can always use a travel agent. Go to markets where the shops are close to each other. This will save you time and help you to easily compare prices. Make sure you have cash as not all markets or suppliers accept debit card or credit cards. Their summer is a hot hot, so June and July are always a good time to travel there. Download Google Translate or any other language translation app so that you can easily communicate with the locals. Be vigilant when paying anything in cash, especially with scammish taxi drivers. If you've gotten into a taxi and the taxi driver says that the price is 50 lira, then show them the note because some of them will say that you gave them 20 lira and you waste a lot of time going back and forth and in the end you have no choice but to pay them again. And the last thing is that wait to buy a SIM card from Turkcell, Turk Telecom or Vodafone in the city. They are more expensive at the airport and always much cheaper in the city. So I've come to the end of this video. I really hope that you found it useful and informative. Please share your feedback in the comments below. I'd like to know what you thought of this video and what your experience has been when buying products from Turkey. If you'd like to download the updated list of all the vendors that you can try in 2023, just go into this video's description box and you'll be able to download it straight and you can use it whichever way you want. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already done so. And I guess that's it. I'll see you on the next one. Bye.